Hey, welcome back to Dad Life Chess. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Uh, today, I want to record round three of my recent tournament back in August, um, the Central California Open. And uh, I was planning on recording this last week, but I had it all planned out. But as life goes, uh, uh, things got busy. So uh, I guess that's why we call this uh, Dad Life Chess. So this was round three. It was my third game on Saturday. We had that deja vu in round two. If you haven't checked it out, please do. It was quite a quite a unique game. Uh, this means that the accelerated schedule is over. And now the standard time control. Um, you have uh, one hour, 20 minutes for, uh, for the first 40 moves. After that, sudden death, 30 minutes. And then there's a 30 second increment throughout um, uh, going into this tournament somebody asked this in the previous uh, videos in the in the comments um, this is the under 1700 section I was rated about 1660 my opponent was rated about 1495 right around 1500 uh, my opponent is um, uh, 16 years old uh, student and uh, really strong player uh, teenager um, uh, he played incredibly well, uh, very creative at times, and uh, uh, had a really good uh, tournament, actually. So uh, the game started out with d4, and my opponent played e6, and I thought, whoa, what are we going to do? Get, get deja vu again, like we had last time? So um, I play in my typical London uh, standard style, and um, I was expecting something like you know d5, or maybe just knight f6 with an early c5. There's a lot of options. Uh, this, this structure, this early d6, is a very flexible uh, way for um, for black to play, uh, but once I played bishop f4, my opponent uh, very ra rather rather uh, confidently and quickly uh, played f5. Now, this is a tricky move order. Um, there is uh, an opening I like to play against the Dutch, and it's not the London system. <laughs> Uh, a few months ago, or maybe it was last year, I saw a, uh, a video on um, the Chess Dojo by Grandmaster Jesse Cry, where he uh, showed a line after f5 that you play in early bishop g5. And uh, this opening against the Dutch is is really annoying for Dutch players uh, because uh, if they're a if they're like a classical Dutch player and they want to play an early e6 can't do that because the queen is toast um, things uh, you know if they want to kick the bishop back uh, stuff like this can happen where you can uh, actually play an early uh, e3 in these positions and if they take then uh, you might have the shortest um, tournament game of your life because that's checkmate uh though that doesn't obviously happen over the board very often so i like this idea of an early bishop g5 however when um when black plays the flexible uh move e6 bishop f4 and then f5 um the game kind of takes a different turn now you can, and I've seen a, many uh, books and resources on uh, the London system. They recommend many different lines um, where you'll play a standard uh, London system style, and some of them are aggressive, some of them are not. But I just feel like black is kind of in the driver's seat. So a friend of mine online, uh, actually uh, uh, the, the gentleman who created the London attack on, on Chessable, he kind of got, got me into this move um, that I have really begun to love. And I actually created my own little um, uh, mini uh, chessable course uh, that I had drilled. And uh, ironically, I had uh, reviewed these lines that morning, uh, that Saturday morning on chessable. And uh, so when my opponent played f5, I looked, I thought, okay, here we go. I've never tried this over the board. Uh, let's see how it goes. I played it online. I've never, never once uh, tried it over the board. So I, I, I played g4, but I played it rather confidently. I just Played the move, wrote down my move, you know, um, and my opponent looked at it, looked at that move like, whoa, what, what, what is this? And after the game, my opponent had said, "It's like, is that even a move? What is G four? You know?" And uh, it, there is a name for it if you look it up. It has a really random name. I've tried, I tried, as I tried to pronounce it. I like, I'm gonna butcher this. I couldn't find out uh, how to pronounce it. So uh, do your own research. We'll just call it the uh, the G four uh, London Gambit or something like that. And um, uh, the idea is you're just giving up a pawn. Uh, and uh, sometimes you'll you'll go give us a, a second pawn just to get this early uh, domination in the center, quick development, kind of like any uh, any um, uh, gambit line. And uh, so my opponent took the pawn, um, and at this point I played h3 very confidently. I kind of knew by my opponent's body language and his expression that he was out of 
familiar territory. And there's kind of like this, um, uh, there's a little bit of the psychological aspect of chess when you're playing over the board. Um, you you kind of want your opponent to think, hey, I, I know what I'm doing. I got this all figured out. In reality, this is basically as far as I know my theory. Um, you know, push h3, take with, take with the knight and uh, see what happens. And so at this point, my opponent actually started to take a lot of time uh, thinking. And um, so much so that by about move 15 to 16, uh, he was down to like five minutes. Um, and uh, so he started thinking really long um, in this position. And uh, he finally took. It's probably not advice. Oftentimes they'll push, play knight f6. There's a lot of different things you can do. It's probably not advice to take the second pawn. I always remember hearing somewhere uh, in a gambit, always take the first pawn, never take the second pawn, you know. Um, but uh, my opponent took, so I said, hey, we're all in. Uh, boom, I take. Now, obviously, I have I have two of my pieces developed. I have a little more uh, flexibility in the center, uh, but I'm down a pawn. So... Um, I got I to gotta play dynamically. Uh, my opponent played knight f6. Again, remember, he's taking a lot of time with these moves, and he's really putting some thought into it. I played knight c3, and then my opponent played uh, bishop b4. I don't know why, because my my plan was to simply just play queen d3, e4. Uh, sometimes you play f3 to, to support it. Um, but... I didn't want him to ruin my pawn structure, and I was kind of thinking, do I have to go back? You know, it's going to ruin my thing. It's like, oh, I'll just do what I had originally planned. I was expecting d5, which is your most common move, um, not bishop b4. So I just played uh, uh, queen d3. And I thought, well, maybe he's going to go here. You know, I'll drop back and we get some exchanges. But he has some weaknesses on the king side. My rook's on an open file. You know, we, there's a lot of options here. Uh, but then my opponent played d6. And even during the game, I kind of felt like this was an inaccuracy. Uh, come to find out there's a tactic that I had in this position. Um, the computer suggests just simply castling queenside, or even actually uh, the idea is playing an early knight g5 with threats on h7 and uh, can't do things like this because that gets really dicey on the light squares. Um, if my opponent goes here, you can just take here and things are just uh, going to get ugly. So uh, knight g5 was actually a, a really strong move and it kind of goes back to learning not to just play the most common developing moves. Um, actually, I was reading somewhere recently uh, how when you have the initiative, you have to kind of think in a more creative manner and uh, just playing, you know, sticking to your plan so rigidly without uh, stopping and, and looking at the position, um, you might miss opportunities. Now, the move I played didn't lose, you know, the game, but it didn't uh, didn't play to uh, the actual uh, actual position over the board. So I played uh, e4, and uh, as you can see with the evaluation bar, it kind of just evens out a little bit. And my opponent in this position ended up playing uh, queen e7. And I think my opponent was trying to push e5, and uh, that was kind of his idea. And so in this position, I wanted to stop that by playing it myself. Come to find out, it's probably better for me just to castle, uh, keep the tension in the center. Um, and if I do castle any place here, I can actually take right now. And then this is actually uh, really, really good uh, for for white. So it wasn't really a threat um, because this he obviously cannot take uh, because this is a problem. Uh, the uh, This this uh, open D file. So uh, there wasn't actually a threat of him playing E5. I probably should have just castled. However, I saw the problem of him pushing E5. So I then ended up playing E5 myself. Um, my opponent um, could have actually in this position just taken and take back. Oops, take back. And um, uh, the position's somewhat equal. Uh, however, my opponent played knight d5, which is logical. Um, he didn't want to maybe ruin his pawn structure, and now he's putting pressure on my knight. I just went ahead and actually got a little bit of a tempo uh, in this position. I put my bishop to g5, uh, forcing this queen to make a decision, um, and she ended up going to f7. A little bit of pressure on my f2 pawn. Uh, but then I dropped back down, 
and I wasn't surprised my opponent took here and I took back with my uh, with my pawn because now I want to be able to kick the knight out. I don't want him to just be able to be rock solid on uh, on d5 there. And so here in this position, again, my opponent stops and starts thinking for a long period of time. And he's starting to get down to probably about like I probably about 25 minutes at this position. And uh, it just he just he's just um, eating up his time trying to find a plan and uh, so my opponent plays h6 trying to stop this knight g5 but as soon as he played that move I thought this square uh, this uh, square g6 is going to be uh, forever uh, a weakness these these light squares and so I wanted to try and maneuver my pieces in such a way to get something control over this g6 square and i was trying to figure out what do i do with my bishop like i need my bishop here really but i had to move my queen out of the way so i thought okay well i'm just going to play uh bishop uh, g7 uh, bishop g2 and i'm going to kind of whoops sorry i'm going to kind of get my bishop in this area okay i mean that's kind of a um you know an obvious plan here but uh my opponent played uh rook f8 now Thankfully, it's still being guarded by the knight, so I just have to be careful. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to get uh, checkmated or attacked on the f2 square. Uh, at this point, the game's getting a little exciting. You know, I'm like thinking a lot of things can happen in this position, so. Um, I played uh, bishop e4, obvious threat, bishop g6. My opponent says that is not, not something I want to allow. And then my opponent played, um, uh, my opponent played uh, queen e7. Uh, here in this position, here in this position, my opponent actually had a defensive resource because uh, queen e7 ends up becoming a, a mistake that really allows my, my pieces and my pawns to just kind of control and take over the center uh, this maneuver was actually uh, a, a mistake on my part um, my opponent could have simply just played knight e7 just getting control over uh g6 and then then now there's this threat here so then i can kind of have to drop my bishop back so i'm probably going to either have to uh play my knight in here um then this can happen um takes the computers kind of giving this line here and uh and even here there is this move there's this in between move here um and here they can play d5 kind of following the computer line here knight takes d takes rook f1 wow this is impossible to see uh sometimes uh computer suggests lines that are just like you're like what is happening uh, but by playing this bishop e4 i felt like i had um a good possibility on these light squares um my opponent did have a defensive resource but my opponent ended up just playing queen e7 now when my opponent played this i knew that i was in the driver's seat because before even in like this position i was refraining from playing c4 because i knew that my opponent had a really good escape square but once my opponent played queen e7 kind of ruining this ability for this knight to to get back into a good position uh this square is protected this square is protected this square is protected here and so now i just played c4 uh really without a lot of thought it was kind of like i just i did a little bit of calculation i figured this this knight is going to be going way back to b6 not going to be doing anything in the in the near future and uh, so at this point I end up going to uh, play uh, uh, knight f4 again. I'm I'm kind of all my all my, uh, all my plans and strategies are revolving around this g6 square, and uh, you know in this position perhaps my opponent could play d5 and you know make things a little bit uh, muddled. But my opponent actually went ahead and played queen d7, and here. I actually have a killer uh, move uh, that I missed, and that's d5. And it's a very computerish move. Um, I won't go through it in, in incredible detail. Uh, but uh, and there's also even the move queen g3, knight h5. Um, so I I, I kind of misplayed this position right here. I ended up playing uh, bishop d and uh, bishop g6. This really just kind of forces uh, the black king back to uh to kind of a more safe square now goodness 
you look at this position, I got, you know, all my pieces are in, uh, in, in very aggressive, uh, attacking positions. He's, he's got, we've way underdeveloped his King stuck in the center. Things are going very poorly. Okay. Uh, probably, uh, essentially lost in a way, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm not playing as accurately as I probably should have I'm not calculating as much. Um, at this point, leading up in the next couple moves, I think my opponent was down to like five minutes. And um, so I ended up after playing uh, Bishop G6, my opponent played King D8. I then drop back to H5, opening up this uh, G square uh, for my knight, just trying to put some a lot of pressure on, um, on black and his position. So I had calculated what my opponent was planning to do and um my opponent played kind of what i thought or expected uh, my opponent played uh, d takes e5 and his idea is simply if i take here he would be more than delighted to uh to trade queens and get into a position like this where essentially i'm just down a pawn and you know white's doing better but black has many chances uh to survive so uh my opponent played uh d takes e5 and i knew i had a tactic and i was able to um, put a tempo on the rook okay uh rook's forced to do something so he plays rook f6 and then at this point i just uh take back on e5 so i was able to do kind of an in-between move uh, attack the knight attack the rook and now my knight is in a very very uh strong outpost in the in in in, in black's territory for sure so attacking the queen my opponent plays uh queen e7 and here my opponent had about five minutes left okay and i think i had um probably probably close to an hour left on my clock, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and so I, I ended up playing kind of a, uh, uh, kind of a cheeky move. I would say, uh, I went ahead and played, uh, Rook, uh, Rook B1 and my opponent was aware enough to notice that, uh, you know, if, if my opponent does something, you know, like place a six, I have this move bishop B four, and this queen is actually trapped. Okay. Uh, this queen can't go anywhere. So I'm losing, losing the queen. So I played, um, I played uh, rook B one and my opponent did actually see my threat. So he attempts to stop it. I, I, I was thinking maybe a five was probably his best play, uh, but he wanted to obviously get pieces out. So he played knight, uh, knight C six. Now, I missed a uh, I missed a killer tactic in this position. Um, I could just take here, but I ended up playing Rook G1, which is the second best move uh, according to the computer. Obviously, I didn't see or calculate uh, how deeply the knight takes is. So, in this position, you can actually take here. Uh, the pawn pawn takes you that you're gonna lose the queen, and then you now play Bishop uh, B4. There's a killer move. Okay, I knew that he'd have this square, queen d7, all right? This move would be, it, it, this is the reason why, obviously, I didn't play knight takes c6, because I did not see this. Um, there's only one and one and only one move uh, that uh, wins for black. Uh, there's, uh, there's one move that maintains advantage. Everything else is kind of like basically equal. And uh, that is the incredible, um, that is the incredible uh, uh, queen h7. I would give this a double exclamation point. Uh, this move, uh, this queen's coming in here and either black is gonna get checkmated or you can't even make room, can't even make room. Black's either gonna get checkmated or lose a ton of material. Uh, the computer's basically just saying, just just throw uh, the rook in the way, uh, let him take it, and it is just crushing, crushing. Uh, the computer gives a, a 11 um, 
uh, 11 uh, plus 11 for for white so yeah it basically like if if he goes something like this that's just basically checkmate it's coming you know this is going to be this is what's going to happen but uh black basically just have to give all of his material away and and then get checkmated <laughs> so in this position my opponent played uh knight c6 and then i ended up playing um uh, rook g1 it, it maintains an advantage obviously wasn't as crushing as knight takes c6 with the idea of queen h7 but uh i wanted to again i'm getting con I'm, I'm just get, trying to get infiltrate on these light squares and uh then my opponent plays uh rook uh rook f5 uh obviously attacking my bishop so i play uh bishop g4 and my opponent goes back to f6 and now i go here it, in reality my opponent kind of forced me to do what I wanted to do anyway. I wanted to get my bishop here, take, and then take again. The idea is takes and takes, and then I'm threatening this uh, um, royal fork, uh, the king and the queen. So when my opponent played here, I played here, he goes here, I go back here. Um, then my opponent plays this. Now, at this point in the game, I thought to myself, I just, I think I'm going to win this game because look at this position this piece has not even been moved this knight has made its way out and back this knight you know has gone from here to here to here and look at look at black's pieces versus my pieces and everything is is attacking it i just knew i had a crushing position but i knew i needed to win so i needed to find that key uh way to break through and I was lucky enough to see uh, the best move, which is bishop b4. And my opponent, um, obviously not wanting to give up his queen, which ironically the computer says is the best. I always laugh when the computer's like, just sacrifice your queen and and live with a, a plus 11 um, deficit, you know, or, you know, you're thinking to yourself, okay, I would rather not. I'd rather try to keep my queen on the board and see if um, my opponent can find the best way. So my opponent played queen e8, and now what is unprotected? Uh, too much pressure, too much pressure. No, these guys are doing absolutely nothing. This rook's off sides. This rook is basically sleeping in the corner, and uh, there it is. Rook takes g7. I knew at this point we're doing really well because this is coming. There's not, a, like, a, there's not really a way to stop it either. Um, really, there's no way to stop it. So uh, my opponent played here, uh, knight uh, c6, and uh, and now I was able to just um, uh, simplify. I thought, okay, he's guarding this e7 square. I'm just going to take with check. Again, the computer's suggesting bishop takes first, um, and uh, but uh, knight takes is winning. Is definitely winning. So he takes, and then I go here. Uh, my opponent takes. I take here and here. And I thought my opponent was going to resign. Not so. <laughs> now, give credit to my opponent. Uh, my opponent played, uh, you know, a hard fight game. And uh, no hard feelings or anything like that. But uh, uh, my opponent uh, actually required me to convert this. So give him credit, you know. Uh, so I, I took a deep breath actually here. I actually, my opponent did not resign. And I took stock of the game. I thought, okay, I'm, I'm winning. There's no way around it. I'm winning. Um, and um, so I I have, a, I have a, a queen for a knight and a rook, basically. Um, but I want to simplify I am very much so a keep it simple, stupid kind of thing. So I took this pawn. It was free. Uh, this rook is in the corner. Obviously can't tr stop with this. So he plays here. And there's a lot of ways the computer finds to find like a little more accurate. But I just wanted to get the pieces off the board, convert this end game and win and go home. Because it was actually getting kind of late. So I, I calculated I want to play C5. Okay, I'm going to get another one of these rooks out of the way. Uh, my opponent plays knight d7. I take. He takes here. And then I just play bishop b5. I wasn't worried about these kind of things because those are just going to put pawns on light squares, uh, restricting, again, the scope of his bishop. My opponent played uh, bishop uh, d7. I thought, okay, I'm going to play a4. I don't mind this exchange. 
healing my pawn structure a little bit, uh, a lot more chances. My opponent plays uh, bishop c6, and then now I'm just going to infiltrate into his position. My I played queen h7, rook f7, queen. I took this pawn. This is kind of the his little uh, pass pawn. I wanted to get rid of that. So my opponent plays uh, bishop d5. I play c4. I'm not worried about this because I have the tempo on his bishop right now. He plays bishop f3. And uh, here I played, uh, I played queen g5. My opponent played rook f6. I played uh, queen e5. Now here is what I was thinking, is if here or here I have, I can take obviously, or just take check. Um, my opponent played uh, rook g6, uh, trying to get something here. I always have an escape square. So I played queen takes c7. My opponent played king f6 and this last move that is kind of uh, my opponent actually required me to go all the way to checkmate but in this position because this bishop's doing a lot more than this knight's doing and he's, he's not ever getting out i actually just played uh queen f4 i was very kind of happy i saw that um and uh, my opponent played uh king g7 i took here he played a6 i played here and my opponent played king h6 i took yeah, he takes, I take, he goes here, and then I go a5. That's right, I went a5. My opponent played e4. I took with the queen, and uh, I'll just go ahead and go through these game, these moves. My opponent played here. Um, I played queen h5. I was like, I'm just going to take. And so, actually, that is, uh, in my mind, the best way to convert. Um, got a queen. And uh, then the rest is history. My opponent actually required me to play. I just grabbed a rook because I was like, okay, we're just going to do the rook roller mate. And there it is. There it is. So um, interesting. My opponent played very well in this tournament. Uh, he actually went on uh, to go four out of five. Uh, the only game he did not win was this game. And um, so he's got a great future ahead of him. Uh, we were able to talk about the game a little bit afterwards. Um, I was lucky enough to kind of surprise him in the opening. He didn't really, he was out of book, out of his understanding, like way, way early, way early, um, like move two or three. And uh, so I was able to capitalize on that. Um, there was some parts of this game. I felt really good about this game after. And then kind of, you, when you really throw it in the computer, you're like, okay, there's a lot of things I could have, uh, you know, um, done better and the computer always has a way of, of uh, humbling us but one of the big takeaways is probably uh way back uh early on when i played um let's see here this this right here uh this move uh this knight g5 um or just castles uh probably was a better uh a better uh place a uh, better one here um even even knight g5 here is not a bad idea but one of the big takeaways is is when you have a really strong position um you know calculate look at the position don't just play moves automatically uh, but play what the the position uh, requires. So, um, yeah. So going uh, after this game, I was three and zero. I was three and zero, and uh, going into um, the next round. Now, round four uh, was Sunday morning, so I ended up deciding to take a buy. I, I took a buy. Uh, before the tournament even started, I wanted to go to church with my family, and uh, so uh, I decided to take a fourth round buy. So, going into round five, the last round, I was um, uh, I was three and a half, three and a half out of four, and uh, so next time I will recap round five. Uh, again, I didn't play round four; had a buy. Um, Sunday morning. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so it was, it was, I was feeling good about this tournament at this point. And, uh, so next time I will, I'll recap that next video. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Uh, feel free to like the video, subscribe, and, uh, give me some comments below. Uh, I've been uh, encouraged. I've been encouraged by some of your comments and uh, some of the, the things you've written have been helpful. Um, so thanks so much. Have a great day. Next time we'll be back with dad life chess.